like the old days waiting for the bus. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> Except this is a lot better. Yeah. I don't have to go to school. <laughs> What is up guys, Joe Holland here. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new to the channel, we offer a hearty and heartfelt welcome to you as well. We are entering the North Main Woods on a meat hunt trip for ice fishing. That's right, we are going to the third biggest lake in the state of Maine at 25,000 plus acres. It is 25 miles long, anywhere from one to four miles wide. Chizuncook Lake is the name of this beast we're going to. And when I say meat hunting, we're gonna to try to fill the freezer with short salmon, landlocked salmon, and cusk. One of my absolute favorite to eat, also known as the burbot, the lawyer fish, the eel pout, and a ton of other names too, we won't get into those. But when I say we, I got a special guest for me and a special guest for you too, the one and only, world famous Donnie Johnston. I'm not so sure about the world famous. <laughs> you but, will be. <laughs> but uh, we're right now we left Jefferson this morning about seven o'clock. Uh, we're now we headed to Millinocket, came through Millinocket about 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago. And we are in a beautiful view of Mount Katad. We're nearing Abol Bridge, a favorite spot to stop and, and look at the view. I've uh, been by it hundreds of times, seem to stop about every time I come up through here. But uh, so we're excited because we're going to go to Chisuncook Village. And I have been there several times, some by canoe going down the West Branch. A couple times we hiked in there before the state put a road in there, which uh, met some disagreements with the dwellers at the village. But anyway, they put it in, and uh, we're excited to fish it. I fished it one other time, uh, maybe twice, I ice fishing. Probably one of the coldest places I've ever been at the time we came up ice fishing. It was horrendously cold. Uh, snowmobiles wouldn't start. It was it was just horrible. But anyway, we're going to enjoy this trip. It's much milder. It looks like a mild week out there. Uh, so we're just going to enjoy ourselves and uh, this time we're not camping out on the ice like normal. We uh, have been invited up to stay at a camp, uh, which uh, I'm sure we will enjoy and and uh, and converse with the gentleman that we're staying with, who I am sure has a lot of knowledge of the of the uh, village and to give us a little bit of history and and maybe I can add my two cents worth too. So looking forward to it and. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll keep going up the Golden Road here. It's a little bit bumpy. Uh, it's about 38 degrees, which is very mild for, for up here. Uh, and the road is, uh, well, it's just plain bumpy. So stay tuned and uh, we'll, see, we'll soon be at the packing area where we're gonna meet uh, the, the uh, gentleman that invited us up. Uh, to take us into the village by snow machine. All right, well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay tuned. Good stuff coming. We might be able to even set some cusk lines this afternoon and tonight. 14-mile snowmobile ride in from where we're parking, and we'll bring you along. Next time you see us, we'll be loading up the snowmobiles. Afternoon, you know the morning's gonna be hard to rock. Donnie, are you full? Is your sled full? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty full. Yeah, I'm you want good. Me to put a little more in? No, I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay.
we should be good then. I'll throw the stuff out of the truck in there. Well, like I said, we can go 30 miles this weekend or we can go 500 miles. So right. It depends on what you guys want. To right, do. yeah. <laughs> and these deuce and a half, you see, that was the yeah. only way you could get in here. Really? I had a bulldozer. Right. Yeah. And the old the old ambulance over here is from Sabumic when it was a POW camp. The, the right. old ambulance sits over here in the backyard. Sabumic was a POW camp. I didn't camp. know that. Oh, yeah. The Germans. They, brought, war. they shipped the Germans in to cut wood. Yeah. Because they... There was no up in the middle of nowhere. Where the hell are they gonna go? And all our log cutters were in the, in the war. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so the ambulance that sits over here is from Sabumic when it was a POW oh, wow. camp. Of what, there wasn't a tree here. This was all open. It was all fields all the way up to the church. Not one tree. They hate all this. Yeah. Jiro Island was covered in farms back in the 1900s. It it wasn't wooded. Connected to the mainland. 1916, they built Rip Dam, flooded right, this, and it dam. became an island. So was that uh, like houses and farms? Farms. You could look over there and watch the deer running in the fields and the farms. Like at 1900, if you were sitting here. And what what year did they move the, the graveyard? Same as when 1916, when they flooded when they flooded it the second time when they did Rip Dam. Yeah. And they moved all the gravestones up to the graveyard that's still up here. There's stones in there from like 1850. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's there's a lot of history. Oh, here. there's a lot of history. That's here. ungodly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where do you see her fishing? Really? She heads right for the flags. Really? Oh yeah. Sadie yeah. May. She's she's something. Well, Everybody knows her. She's all over the snowmobile pages and everywhere. <laughs> Beautiful. What is up, guys? We made it in. We're here at the famous. Chazuncook Village, historic Chazuncook Village, built in the 1840s, I believe. Holy cow, there's a church. There's a church in the woods. I mean, we're into the North Main Woods. We're like 60 miles from Millinocket or so into the woods. And there's a church right there, I guess. Cool. Bunch of buildings on the lake. Pretty amazing. I better catch up. When was it? Back in the 80s, that one was built. We were in the Portland Press Herald and everything. This came from Red Brook. They skidded them up here on the ice. No way. Yeah. Yeah, that one came from Jiro Island, north that They skidded it over on the ice. They made part of it. They used to just pull them, pull them around when they needed. Yeah, yeah. That was the old store. There's a village here. I know it's called Chazunka Village. Why should I be surprised? But there's houses and buildings, camps, churches, outhouses, vehicles. Exactly. Solar panels. Telephones. That's one of the old trucks where they used to have to come in with. See the big jack truck. Oh yeah. That's called Bigfoot. Bigfoot? Yeah. It's old jack jack, huh? <laughs> How about this telephone? Does that thing get out? Yeah, that gets good service. These <laughs> ones were built, these are newer. They were built, I think, in the 80s. This one was built back in the 50s.
every one of these houses has a old truck in front of it that probably still runs leave it in the camp boat in inland fisheries and wildlife cabin really yeah for like wardens and biologists yeah, they, they haven't stayed in it since i've been in here four years but last year they came Did they come in or did they hire that kid to come no, in? No, there were eight wardens in there. Wow. And they put one day's work, they cleared the whole lot, roofed it, jacked it. I mean, they, they, were, they went out. Wow. That's pretty good today. Yeah, they, they weren't messing around. They were. camp the last one of the original camps that was here there used to be an inn here called the grindle inn and it was it operated it was uh like a sporting camp and so this this is original and the last guy to operate out of chisunkut village lived here pete outway he's the last master guide to operate up here so this was an inn for and the guide guided out of it well this was recent that pete was here i actually found him having a stroke and we got him life flighted out of here and he now lives in millinock at a nursing home wow two and a half years ago so he he was the last guy to operate out of here wow that moose antlers carved this is in memory of red red mcnaughton that was he died he owned the old katan view lodge and it was peter Oatway's cousin and he passed away and he carved them antlers up in memorial 4 11 05 it yep. says wicked yeah Jason Henry, legendary whitetail hunter. Really? I mean, yeah, the real deal. Thanks. Bumper over there. For Donnie, yeah. he's missing some of the tour. Oh yeah. I'll see if he wants to just jump on with me. Yeah. It's only that far again to okay. go south, and then we're back home. You want to jump on with me so you hear some of this? Or I can wait up for you. I just been tooling along. I I didn't know if you were hearing this. Yeah, I, I was hearing. Okay. okay. So this is the original Simmons camp that now owns Katahdin View Lodge. Bert McBurney built it. Okay. And Doc Simmons came here and Dale Simmons. And Doc started coming in here in the 50s and his father started coming in in the 30s. So that's the history of this one. Inside is all just vertical law. It's an old main hunting camp. Two massive box hanging in there. I can take you in and show you. I don't have the key on me today, but if we find time, I, he said I could open it up and show you. But what a, what a neat camp. Wow, that's cool. An yeah. old vertical log. Yeah, cut all the logs right here and built them. That's a, Bert McBurney? Bert McBurney that used to run the lake house. Yeah. Him and Maggie McBurney I've heard built that. this. They also built the one with the solar panels on it where Bigfoot is. Oh, yeah. 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 Bert, Bert used to work for Great Northern Paper. And then you know, when they moved out of here, I guess he purchased the lodge. Yep. 
and uh, stayed here. He married a woman he met in the army who came from Paris, uh, came from France. And she came here and was content to live up here in the wilderness and uh, lived here. I, I, I believe, I don't know if she's still alive or not. As of last year, she was. She's she 92 was, yeah. and living in Bangor, Maine. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I came to the lodge. You know, he was renting out the lodge when I first yep. came here. And, uh, you know, I had Shuttling to... people up and down and hauling goods. Right, and... yeah, he'd, he'd haul it from the land and way down the other end of the lake and haul them in here. Huh. And, uh... And she was, she would prepare the meals, and they would put them up in the, in the uh, old house. Beautiful gardens, yeah. all hand, yeah. you know, home cooked food. Mm. Oh yeah, he had, had everything, you that know. Was amazing. And then in the off season, when he shut down the lake house, he has a camp next to it on the other side of what used to be the lake. Yep, house. his winter camp. Right, his winter camp, and we came here and ice fished out of, out of. He had a. The one he lived in, and then he had another one, one next door. You next could rent. door, we rented that yep. one. Yep, that's what they did for the winter. They yep. didn't run the big house. Yeah, it's too big to eat. I oh, suspect. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. was that, Donnie? Jesus. What decade? <laughs> if you ask me dates, I can't remember. What de dates. what decade? <laughs> it was. It would have been probably <laughs> in the eighties, yeah. somewhere. In that's the what 80s. I was gonna guess. It sounded like the way they were operating. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, and he was the sheriff, he was the road commissioner, he had a boat. For in here? Yeah, he yeah. shuttled goods, you know, he did it all. Yeah. He guided. He only went fishing if he was guiding. It's yeah. the only time he went fishing. Yeah. He had Poor no guy kidding. got cancer. Yeah. And... Yep. But he was quite a quite a guy, you know, quite a woodsman and yep. and he could do what one of these guys that could do anything. You yeah. know, and make Jack, anything, build anything. Jack Murphy was was a heck of a woodsman as well. I mean, if it came to trapping, when people put snowmobiles to cut the downstream, they came and got in. You know what I mean? He, he really knew what he was doing. Yeah. 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 Not to live out here back in those days. In the right. The 60s, 70s. You had to. Yeah. And there were there were beaver trappers that lived here along that Pine Street flowage I showed yeah. you. Charlie Smith, he lived in birch bark teepees. He had multiple ones all along that flowage. We actually found one this fall, bird hunting. We found an old pair of the snowshoes that he used to build out of fur, just pecker poles. Yeah. And he would build his own shoes and he had birch bark teepees out there and that's, he stayed out there all winter. You know, Joe, Joe and I, he got me enthused. Joe got me enthused on collecting axes, old axes. Yeah. And we, we were talking before we came up here, and I said, I bet if that barn is still standing that used to be in back of the lake house, yep. I bet there was all kinds of great oh, yeah. northern stuff in there. Oh, and it's it's in the firehouse? That's right, full of Indian tanks and the pips and all. No kidding. Oh, wow. Um, you could fill a truckload oh. of accents around here when the water's low, just along the shoreline. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Boom chains. Oh, yeah. Boom chains. I, mean, yeah. I know where there's 2,000 pounds of boom chains sitting right now. Well, you, gotta, we, you gotta let me know when we can find accents. Yeah. I'd love and access. We actually went farther than that when the water was down um, in 2020. It was as low as it yeah. in 20 years. We went over the Longley Stream where the old Indian yep. trading, because this Chisunkup means where waters meet. Yep. And all these were just rivers and streams. And they came together before they flooded it. And there was an Indian trading camp at the intersection of all the streams. And they all met up. And even the French trappers came through. And so we actually found some of digging in the shore, some old arrowheads, spearheads, which they claim date back farther than the Penobscot Indians, like way back farther than that. Because wow. they were white and bleached out. I mean, yeah. we found some cool stuff. There's, wow. there's a lot of stuff here. Well, I don't know if you watched one of Joe's videos where we, I knew where there was a couple old logging camps in yep. the river. Yep. We, we found many horseshoes. Yeah. And we found six axe heads, three of which we could identify still. Right. They had identified marks. And then you can go ahead and clean them up, ionize them back. And really, yep. Piston Farm sells them over there. Every yeah. time they find oh, them, really? they clean it up. Yeah, so here on the West Branch, there was a boom house right at the mouth 
and that was it had a blacksmith shop and everything and then halfway up there was what they called the halfway house or uh, another farm up towards Pittston farm yeah. and then they there were farms and depots all down the river you know and there was actually a land bri a, a bridge across the west branch way back in the late 1800s where you could drive you know early 1900s when cars started coming in that you could drive across that river Whoa. I wish we had that now because we could jump right over it. In fact, there was an old telephone line. Yes. That followed all the way down. Yeah, and it goes down the old village road, and there's still wires hanging in the yeah. trees down there. Really? Yeah, there's old poles. Jeez. Yeah, they had telephone service. You could call Greenville from here. The, the northern had a telephone yeah. Yeah. set up. Back, back in the 50s, late 50s, I came up here with my friend Al. The Lobster Lake. Mm -hmm. They had still had a call box on a tree on Lobster Lake, and I actually called my girlfriend yep. back home from that call box. Well, you know, they paid a man to maintain that line. He walked that yep. line. All those lines that went in by West Branch Pond on the Frenchtown Road and all up through here, yep. they, they paid men to walk those lines and cut the trees off them when they came down yep. and maintain them. And there's still Hanging in the trees around here, all the porcelain. Yeah. Layers. Yeah, we found several. Yeah, yeah we found a bunch. If you go down the Boom House Trail, where they hike up to the village when they come down the river from the Boom House campsite, those insulators are still hanging yeah. in the trees. Yeah. Where they had the phone lines. Yeah. yeah those cedar trees will never come down. No. No, and that's yeah. what they hung them in. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, there's you could you could spend a year here and not touch. Yeah. Everything that is to be found. Two years ago when the water was low, we went up and at Pine Stream Falls, they call it, on the West Branch. So there's a set of falls on the flowage, but on the West Branch is a set they called Pine Stream Falls. And when it was low, it was ledges on both sides in a real sluice way. And there are names carved in the rocks of all the Come guys on. that died there from 1860, no 1850. Way. Yeah. Can you still I've got read pitch, them? I've got pictures of them. You can still read them? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. You can read the dates. Have you uh, read yep. the Thoreau's book, The Main Woods? No. You want to read it. It's easy reading. Yep. And it's all about one of his trips that he made down the river uh, here. I'll tell you what I did read, though, is Fanny Hardy Ekstrom's Penobscot Man. Yeah, that's a great that's book. The full book. history of 1850 yeah, up here, we, the Log yeah, That's a great book. That's a great book. Right. Well, you read about those guys dying on the river. So those names, yep. it's from 1850. Yep. Those are the dates. It coincides when John Ross was the dry wow. boss up here and the PLC, Penobscot Lumber Company, was the most famous river driving company in the country at yeah. that time because they were flooding Bangor, Penobscot Bay with all the timber from here and it was getting shipped right over to Britain. Yeah. I mean, it, it was the, you could walk across Penobscot Bay on logs oh, in the yeah. summer when all the drives came into boom. Yeah. It was all right from up in this area. Yeah. The last year of the Pope Drive down Unbelievable. the river, Al and I came down through, and the, the river was chock-a-block full of pulp wood. Yep. And I was up in the bow pushing it away from the canoe. We get down before the river, you know, river empties into this lake. Yep. There was a call box there on a tree, pine you, tree. You'd call them to open the boom we and called, let you through. Yeah, we called up the village here. Yep. And they came up. Great Northern came up with their steel boat. Up this bay was completely full of yep. pulpwood. It was a boom jumper, they called and it. The boom jumper. My dad drove one of those boom jumpers. And he loaded the canoe really? on there yeah. and we towed it up. Take here. you down. Free of charge. Yeah, they used to take you. They would take you up in Pine Stream. There was a set of sporting camps up in there, and they would they would shuttle you up through the logs and over the dam, and you could con continue on your canoe and go up. Yeah. Back then, there was three and four pound brookies up there. I'm gonna do that trip in um, uh, May. First or second week of May, we're gonna do that with canoes, me and Jason Henry. If we're gonna find these old spring holes and stuff, ledge points that the guys have told me about. Yeah. We're gonna whale a... I bet you could find some treasures. I think we're gonna do, well, we found them old birch bark cabins of Charlie Smith's last year. Right. And I How mean, old are they, you think? From the 50s. Still, are they still like kind of standing? They collapse now, but yeah. 10 years ago they were still standing. Wow. But the snowshoes were hanging on the tree that he had just cut little fir poles and yeah. and uh, they they run like this and he cut, I've got a picture of those, I took a picture of those. He cut some sticks and put across them and lashed them together with cordage and then he would have 
would have heated them to bend the tips up and tied the tips up and that was yep. his snowshoes. He, he built all his own snowshoes. There's actually still a bunch of blanks sitting out there that he had cut ahead to build more. Oh, yeah, wow. I mean, it's, it's a, and they, supposedly those are all the way up through Pine Stream flowage. Wow. Jeez. So um, that's another thing I'm gonna offer, like if I do backcountry snowmobiling, that'll yeah. be a trip. I'll take people that 10 miles down through the flowage. Wow. The other thing I've got to do to put it together is I've got to cut the access on at the bridge and I've got to cut a trail around the dam because there'll be open water at the base of the dam all year. So we'd have to go up around yeah. that, but it's an old chopping, so it, it's easily done. Oh, yeah. I just haven't done it yet. Yeah. But that's the type of stuff I'm going to get into is, wow. you want to go out in the back country? We'll yeah. go in the back country. Well, I like back country. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the road book. He had an Indian guide from Old Town. Yeah. Uh, the Indian actually shot a moose on this the summer trip up Pine Street. Yep, that's yeah. where they went to hunt moose. Yep. And in September they hunted them on the full moon yep. and they'd just sit in there. The Indians would sit in there and wait until they heard them walk into the water and then they'd creep up and shoot them. And the water was cool enough that they'd clean the guts out and it would cool the moose right there and then they'd drag it home through the water. And that's, they hunted a lot there. And they also hunted up Clark McGomick Stream but it was so buggy up there. And my dad told me that when he worked up there for the Northern, but they would go up and they would light the peat moss on fire in a big like mile perimeter. And it would just slow smolder to keep the bugs away from their camp. That's how they did it. They just go up and randomly light fires in that peat moss huh. and let it just smolder. And that's how they kept the bugs down. I mean, it's just unbelievable the history up here. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and then you go back farther than that, and I mean, this was a major uh, waterway for the Wabanaki Indians. I mean, this yeah. was, and they still have the, the the loop trail. They do it. We had a woman come through. She came all the way from New York by canoe last year, and she actually wrote the guidebook. And it's cool because I got in the guidebook because I, you know, we brought her up. We gave her a hot shower. She yeah. hadn't seen a hot shower in two weeks, and gave her tea, and she talked to us, and she mailed us the new updated guidebook, autographed, and she put in there, you know, we, like we said, we, it's not a, a destination to come to, but if you're in need, look, you look around the village, you can probably find what you need, you know, yeah. and any people will help you out. And uh, she was a really, really neat lady. Well, all right, that's the north end. We'll go down and we'll stop at the church. Yeah, yeah so uh, a lot of them builders, they just skidded them around um, on lo roller logs, uh, they pulled them on skids with horses, yeah. you know, across the lake. Bert moves a lot of them around with his bulldozer. camp old gotcha. log. it was in the mud where you could see we jacked it up three feet last year wow what about these old fords they run i don't think so but they probably wouldn't take much to get them running yeah nobody's living in this this uh, house anymore no no wow. the fella moved down to bangor with him? yeah johnny crimmins he's moved to bangor he was in here 40 years, he wanted out. It'd be, I guess, like being in civilization for 40 and wanting in, you know? Yeah. I was the opposite. Yeah. yeah he was in here, um, he stayed in the first winter I was in here. And then he comes once in a while in the summer and mows the lawn and stuff. You drove him out. No, no, he wanted, he wanted <laughs> I'm out. just kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh, he took it hard when Jack Murphy died and oh, he wanted yeah. to go into civilization. Is he buried in this cemetery up here? Yes, Jack is, yep. Now that, what about that old camp in the woods that's got a tree on it? 
hole falling in halfway to the church. No, halfway to the church. Oh, up way up there. That in. that was uh, Charlie Fitzgerald's, and he wants the property to go back to nature. And he also owns the one next to where I am, the wooded lot in between. Wow. The two properties, he owns that one, and he just wants them to revert back to nature. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's. There's enough, they're, nat they're there's enough nature up here. Yeah, but they're in a trust. So there ain't no. Everybody's tried. Yeah. <laughs> that's too bad. <laughs> Take me to church. Oh man, you see that window? No way! It's in there on the floor. No, come on! Yeah. You hear that, Donnie? What's that? Oops, I gotta get the dog. It's a partridge still in there on the floor. What? Look at that window. Oh, partridge flight through it? Yeah. He's in there on the floor. No kidding. Is he alive? Uh, I think he went <laughs> for a while because there's a poop on the floor. But oh, he's yeah. Solid now. Well, Ouch. I was going to bring him down to camp and start him out so we could eat him. You can, of course you can. <laughs> yeah. Why not, right? Yeah. So this is, we're in the process of doing some restoring. I put this new uh, pressure treated decking on last year. We've built that new deck. We've roofed all the buildings. You know, basically once a generation, it's got to be restored and I'm That's what in on the stage, right? When yes. Comes. Yeah. We've done that all up inside nice. But there she is. So all your history is right here. That tells about it being on the historic register of oh, deeds. Wow. And we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look at that. This is this is it, all the donations and everything coming in from you know for last year. We uh, we we document it all so everybody gets recognized for the contributions and the the donations. There's the crew guys all in their 70s that built the decks over wow. there. Again. Oh. volunteered and more re remembrance but this one starts back in uh, 1868 and goes up now look no trees oh down on the point yeah I gotta I'm gonna have to sit I down mean, and really yeah. go through that Fun. wow yeah look at that huh yeah well, you, you want to know the story on that yeah okay so my dad took a photograph of that in the 71 that's the Hilton telling a boom and my grandmother paid Jerry Weymouth down in Abbott to paint this picture and then donated it to the church in remembrance of my great grandfather, John Clark Sr., who had the lumber camps at Red Brook. No way. So, yeah, my family donated that photo. That is awesome. Yeah, wow. Really you neat. must be pumped to see that. Yeah. So, this is the bell tower. And I'm currently, I cleaned everything out of here last year. Saved as many of the old school desks from the 30s as I could find. Yeah. I've got one more to bring up here. And we're going to set it up like the 30s schoolhouse. Nice. As a little museum. Wow. This will come out of here. Yeah. We've got a blackboard we had made. And old, Look at these old desks. We have a period piece flag with the proper amount of stars on it. I mean, everything's going to be. It's going to be. Oh, prime. and a blackboard? Yeah, we're going to put a blackboard up here. Wow. So we're going to set it up as the old school room would have been set up. Kind of as a, you know, they wanted to throw these out. And, oh, no, you know, way. no way. There's only three left in the village. You know, oh. I know there's a fourth. I don't know if the guy will part with it. He got it away from me when they were cleaning the shed out. And, oh. But I hope I can get it back and have four in here. Yeah. You know. And uh, of course, this is the old, old bell that's been here since uh, 23, because our 100th anniversary is in 2023. So here it's uh, 
2023 and we've got the 100th anniversary of the Chisungkook Village Church maintained by the Greenville Union Church in Greenville and we're doing a fairly substantial restore to the parsonage buildings and the building itself. We need foundation work and I'm putting a new deck on and they're doing insulation in Tongue Groove Pine and we're working on the grounds and uh, we, we have services through the summer usually starting around June and go through September. We sometimes do one on Memorial Day weekend. And anybody interested want to come up and uh, see a service or come to the old home celebration, you're more than welcome. You can contact me at johnmoreii at hotmail.com. That's all lowercase. Or the Greenville Union Church at gmail.com. And the whole mission and uh, project is being done by donations. If anybody's interested in supporting it financially or uh, we look for work parties to come up to and stay a night or two and and uh, do work on it. So it's it's a very nice project. We're interested in it. It's been done three times since 1923. This is the third time it's going to be restored. Once a generation, it's going to happen. So we're trying to get involved and get it done for this one. How long has he been on the floor? I don't know. I just came up and shuffled the steps so we could get in here when you were coming and saw it yesterday. That's why I haven't got it fixed yet. What did you see? The broken window oh, in the park. Where was that grouse? Right there. So he came right through the window. Oh so now goodness. I gotta fix the window and we're gonna see if we can eat him. Yeah? So these are the old trophies. They used to have horseshoe tournaments at the picnic. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That's You'll awesome. You'll probably have to have that again while on the 100th anniversary. Oh wait, we are. Yeah. And the church derby, we're getting it all going again. 1994. Yep. Yeah, like he pooped over there, so he must right. have been he alive. Right, he was alive for a while. He was alive she's, for a while. He's eating all the mess. He probably froze to death on yeah. that cold night. Yeah, so I think he's fresh. We're going to take him home far him out and see. His hides are off. Wow, he is. So this is a old, there used to be a pine down on Graveyard Point. It was famous. It was how everybody came up the lake. And in the storms, you could see that old 100-year-old pine, you know? Yeah. And it fell down a few years ago. So this is one of the cookies off the limbs. And you could see the Ansel Smith, when he settled this place, it was just a little tiny tree. And then the first tow boat showed up and Crosscut saws in 1890. That's how big, you know, how old the tree was. Rip Dam in 1916, 1920, uh, 1976, the last log drive. But he's got that wrong. It was 72 up here. 76 right. was on the Kennebec. 72, yeah. But anyways, that's how big that limb was in 76. And then it made it to here and it fell over. But look how look how narrow those were. Yeah, are. how tight they were. Yeah. Yeah. He made that last year. Brad Edwards made That's it. Your bird. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna eat him. <laughs> well, we got dinner at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got out of the church. Who knew we had dinner yeah, sitting right. up here? The Lord provided. Yeah. Do they do weddings and stuff here? You can. It's been a long time since somebody got married here. Why wouldn't you get married here? I want to. I got a party with this woman. I, I, if I, if I, I'll latch her listen, up I'll latch her up. Why wouldn't you get married right here? Oh, wow. Get hitched right here. I'm gonna put this out there on YouTube, bro. Yes. If if you want, if you're a good woods woman, <laughs> and you don't mind type stuff like this, wow. let me know, and I'll have, I'll bring you right up here. This is, can I play and this? we'll get yeah. hitched. You gotta know how to skin or clean fish. Yeah. So, and skin fur. These are all the in memoriam dedications of the people that have passed from the village. And of course, I believe Jackson Murphy's the last one. No, Tommy Leroy was the last one to pass that we had to put somebody on there in 2021. But when somebody passes, they that's in the association, their name gets on these plaques. Yeah. And I mean, they go back. When did they start? 85. Doing it? Yeah, 85. They started doing that, which is a nice gesture. Yeah. You know, you can remember, come up and look at that and remember everybody that was yeah. around. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as me. I love history. We're in like the middle of the main North Main Woods, seeing this historic village. It's a one of a kind place in the world, really. Definitely a one of a kind place in Maine. This is the old Department of Conservation bunkhouse. Really? Forest rangers used to stay. Yeah. Department of Conservation house. Oh, 
the bunkhouse. Now before, well that, that's an old building. And down here, before they flooded it, moved the graveyard. The graveyard used to be down here, they moved it up. Before they flooded it, there was uh, a barn, blacksmith shops, and a boom house here. The Great Northern operated. I mean, you could see it, you could see it from way down what we call the barrel, the narrow part of the lake where you can choose to go into Caribou or down towards the dam. You could see it from there. It was, it was unbelievable. It came down. Too bad. That, that conservation building, like CCC camp, they used to have during World War II. Uh, no, no, it was the Department of Conservation. The forest rangers used oh, to stay okay. there. And they, the, the forest rangers, they still mow all the campsites out here and everything, uh, but they come by canoe and do them. And by boat, yeah. And uh, do, do all that. What's that one? Boots and a half. That's how they used to get in here. I don't know. It had, a, had a, like a truck like that before they had the road in here. It could have been. And uh, I know that Richard Parks and John Birnbeck, that's how they hauled all the materials in to build their camp. Yeah. Is in that truck right there. See, I bet that was Bert's old truck. Because I can remember he had like an old army truck. Yeah, that's it. And then the, the ambulance, the old ambulance you'll see up here, it came from Sabumic when they had the POW camps. What's this VFW post number one? That's <laughs> VFW post number one to Suncut. <laughs> There's only two members, Peter Simmons and John Burnback. Oh, the doctors? Yeah. That's, that's cool. <laughs> that is cool. That, that, I mean, that sits right up too. You can't tell with the snow, but it's got big tracking tires. Wicked. And Red Big Knot used to run that and shuttle people in and out to Tadview Lodge and haul in everybody's propane and things. He did the propane business and, wow. and all that stuff. Back through the 80s. Yeah, now we can uh, actually step inside the little <laughs> So you can see why they used to call it Catan View Lodge. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Did you put that tree out there? With that one? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, nature put that one there. Uh, oh really, is it growing? That one. No, no, that one in oh, the... Oh yeah. no, that's a Christmas tree. The Supernauts always put it out there so people know where to come up the lake now. Oh, the that's cool. The pine tree's gone. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so this was rebuilt back in the 80s. It's the third building that's set here. The first one set much closer to the to the water. Yeah. And it was in the Victorian style of the ones down the road. And then it burned, and then they built another one, and that burned, and then this one was built in the 80s. Oh, wow. And that, you can see the cellar hole over there behind the old mailbox. Yeah. So there was another building. So what was this used for? Uh, this one here? Yeah. Was ran as Catan View Lodge sporting camps. Wow. Yeah. Oh, look at these old ice skates. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Look at the scale. Yeah. Oh. You ain't seen nothing yet. Is that for drying laundry? That's a ringer for bringing out the water after yep. you wash the clothes. Yeah. yeah on you top run of it a through the ringer. Yep. Run it through the ringer. Right on yeah. top of a bucket. And it yeah. catches the water. Oh, and it clamps to the bucket right yep. there. Yeah. This is a waffle iron. Yeah. Oh, we gotta God. rewire it. We wanna rewire it and yeah. use it. Yeah. Oh my word. He's yeah. got quite an eye buying antiques and things. Oh my word. Holy cow. Wow, we're gonna I think I, here, I don't know. I might have the power shut off out at the main. Yeah, I mean, you know you know, where do you even start? <laughs> Oh Where my gosh. Old TV. Oh my god. And the... Oh my god. 
Oh, I've never seen a TV that old. I've never seen one either. So this one was from, I think, 1901 or 1902. And it originally had a little porch on it. Um, but two years ago, uh, Peter Simmons purchased it from Bill Haggerty and put the metal roof on it and the uh, wraparound farmer's porch and metal roofed it. That really made a difference on the building. But that building and, and this building are one of maybe, and the church, are one of maybe, you know, six or eight original buildings left yeah. in here. Everything's burned and been rebuilt. And that one next door is called Camp Log. It's been named that for 100 years. <laughs> So this is Sound Ledge, it was built by Frank Leroy, and it's owned by Larry and Shannon Leroy now. They used to own Meta Whistler Sporting Camps down on 2nd Roach, I believe, or maybe it was 3rd Roach, but, and just a, a beautiful property. And that's where I spent my first two winters, is in that uninsulated bunkhouse right there. Wow. And you never, the sun never touches that camp from October until June before you get sunlight that hits that camp. Yeah, look at the roof. Yeah, it's just freezing cold. Holy cow. I, I, I was cold. I woke up some mornings and the dog's bowl, the water was frozen, and you know what I mean? It was like, mm -hmm. I thought to myself the first winter, what did you do? Um, you know, this is like survival mode. Yeah. <laughs> that is right on the ledge, too. Oh, yeah. This is Scott Smith's property, and at one time, all this was the same family property. That's an old Red Brook building right there that he's restored. Of course, the only new construction up in the back. That one was built, I believe, by Burt McBurney, the green one, out of parts and pieces. So, like, it's built, like, three foot on center with the stringers and stuff. I mean, I just jacked it last year and put everything back together, so it'll, it'll, it was gonna come down the hill. <laughs> and this one here is Richard Parks. He lives in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, but spends a big part of his summer here. No kidding. And he's a world-class fisherman. an old camp up in there. It was Alec Gunn's old camp and he used to run a boat out here back in the 50s, uh, a big steamboat and, and haul people up. And then that's my water supply right there. That, that wellhead has the hose running down and that gravity feeds all winter long. Like a spring? You see it hanging right there? Oh yeah. Water coming right out of it? Yeah. That's where all my water comes from. Even if it's cold? Yeah, it never freezes. I come down and I drop the five gallon jug off to visit my neighbor and then I come back and pick it up on my own. That's awesome. Yep, that's how I, I have running water, you just gotta run to get it. It's <laughs> drinking, good drinking water? Yep, everything. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Over. You're trying to get some ice off the roof? 
Well, he's got solar panels up there and satellite oh. dish. So this is the only other year-round resident. There's he's only, home, huh? Yeah, there's only two of us that live here year-round. And that's the other resident, John Burnback. How old is he? Uh, 74. Or five. I mean, one or the other. He's right there. He's probably napping. Because <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> So this one's been rebuilt. There was an original old camp here, and then this one was built back in 46. And it was gonna fall over, and you see all them cribs under there? Yeah. There's 11 of them, I built them. Did you really? One fall, yep, jacked it up and put it on those, and I said, I'll do it, but I'm not taking them out. That's your foundation. Yeah, yeah, of course. So there it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, who cares? That's your Brent and Maggie's winter camp up back. That's oh, where you would have stayed. I couldn't yeah, Dominic Supernaut owns it now, the brother to the people that own the lake house. Hey guys. Everybody make it in? We're all, we're all here. We brought the Aussies with us, so. Yeah. Never thought I'd see him in person. <laughs> What's up, man? Yeah. The myth, the legend. So they call this I'm Joe. Joe. I'm Joe. I am Joe. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Eddie. Eddie, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. I'm Steve. Steve, nice, nice to meet you. Too. I'm Kyle. Kyle? Pleased to meet you, Kyle. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. Hey, don't. Both from Aussie. Yeah, they, they this, flew in. This is my friend Donnie. <laughs> hey, Donnie. You might have seen him on a few oh, videos. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I did. I don't know if you've watched any videos with the donuts, cooking donuts. Yeah, good. That's me. Hi. You got the shack over near Lobster, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Eddie. Yeah. Eddie. Oh, I'm Hi. Steve. Nice Good to meet you. Kyle? Yeah. Mark. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, nice first time ice fishing for Australians. Well, he'd been here before, but this... Uh, <laughs> first he, time. Yes, yeah, first time. Yeah. Uh, Pretty awesome, guys. There's an old camp. That's pretty. That Kennison camp's a pretty one. Yeah, that's a cute little camp. Bruce, he worked on the River Drive up here. Really? Yeah, this is uh, the other uh, new construction that's going on. This is uh, Brian Lebrex. Uh, he works up on the oil fields in Alaska some and then comes in here quite a bit in the summer. And he's in Florida right now. This next one down, um, the A-frames was a Jewish boys summer camp. What's it? Yeah. for summers and that that was like a badminton and tennis area up there oh, and they wow. had these a-frames and they did canoe trips and things because they wanted to get the boys out and experience the wilderness you know through the 50s 60s wow yeah kevin mccarthy owns it now he's an old trawler fisherman from uh gloucester and he is a character Four days of this. Like he, he could be Kurt's brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kurt, I Bringing the dog in now or later? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, Sadie, man. Come on. Oh. Come here. Ready? John and I are going to head out on the lake 
there's a couple young fellas out there that I guess are big fans of the channel, so we're going to go out and meet them, and, and uh, he's going to introduce me to them, and I think it'll be cool for all of us if I go out and do that. What uh, do you think? Yeah, they've been pestering me ever since they found out you were going to show up. <laughs> Game wardens, come out with your hands up. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> License is present. Hey. <laughs> set right up. How's it going? What's up, bud? Joe. Joe, Robert. Robert, nice to meet you. How you guys doing? Good. Catching them? Not, not yet. Just got set up. Yeah. Oh. Joe. Nice to meet you. Nice Bradley. to meet you. What is it? Bradley. Bradley. Nice to meet you, Bradley. Bradley. We got some some Australian. I met them. Yeah, them. yeah, they were heading out we to get firewood. There. They saw your your truck. Yeah. In the yeah. Parking lot. They liked it. Yeah. Nice. Flag. Who's taking it? I'll leave mine off just because she's a little too stroke. She sounds bad. Yeah, I want to give you guys some light. Yeah. So, all right, guys, this is your chance to be she's a hero. An OG. She's oh, it is oh. ripping. <laughs> There's no line left. <laughs> Whoa, salmon? <laughs> I don't know. No, those cocks do that. I had one. I had just, one doing it. You just get him landed. Yep. You got you got the ice broke out enough so you can yeah, get him up she, out? Yeah, she good. Any size? Um, it's too far away right now. Burr. Oh, I feel it. Yeah. All right, you got somebody reeling? He's yeah. there. He feels him. All right, you got to talk to the camera. Have you ever been on He's YouTube tight. before? Nope. Sweet. First time. Sweet. Oh, he's pulling back. Oh yeah, good one. Yeah, he's caught under something right now. Yeah, that's what they did to me. They wrapped a rock. Yeah, a big one, and I lost it. Yeah. Oh, oh no, he's wrapped. Yeah. He did, didn't he? Work it first. Boy, that's what they do. <laughs> oh 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 oh! Are you oh, kidding me? Oh, you got him free. Are you kidding me? Got him oh, free. I don't feel nothing now. Oh, oh no. Oh, we'll see. Get off. Yep, not looking good. That's what they do. It didn't snap though. I don't no. think it, I don't think it snapped. No, but that's what they do. They get He might have he might have broke. You know, if he if he had it wrapped up yep. and he's only got like six feet yeah. to pull. If, it's a big if it was a big enough if it was big. Right. I think that was a pretty good fish. Oh yeah. It looked like it. I haven't had the small ones take line. I've seen the big ones. And rip. that's but the problem is they go down to the bottom, find the first log, stump, rock. Let me teach you a trick. Yeah, no. So the, so you don't ever want to do that if you can help it. Huh? I learned this recently. Yeah, that was a good So the best way to ever do these, because every time you do that, it puts a twist on the line. Just take one hand, put it right up above it like that so you got tension, and then reel, and then reel just like that. And then you can move the line. It comes in way quicker. See how much quicker that's coming? And then there's no twist in your line, too. All right? That's why I need to get the, only, the only bad part is it's hard to do with gloves, but you can do it with gloves. And then you just you just get the line back. You can go back and forth on the spool. But that won't put any twists in his line. No problem. You break that ice line. What's the trick? Oh, set up a little support and hold the line. No, rather than wrap it by hand, because you, you put. Um, up above to keep tension on it right, yep. and then you can move like i'm moving my fingers left and right so it's going on your spool semi oh, wow. semi yeah, yeah. not, not too do. much especially it rips it did you get your line back uh i got yeah i got the i got my you got your hook no oh no you need one go. I, I got I, I might, I might have one. He's gonna put the hook right to the ice line. I'm just gonna hook it. You should do. You could do that with cost. You should. Yeah. You should. I, I've done it. Yeah. yeah. No, you, you should. What do you need? A hook? Yeah. I might have one. I'm gonna go grab bait. Oh, bait. Yeah. You don't have well, you I know, don't have bait. You know they're here. Ever for this? This. this will prevent that from happening. So, are you good there? Is that where you want to be? Yep. All right. So we're gonna give them like, like two feet. Yeah, two to five foot so right like, there. And you're just gonna take a rubber band, and you just pass it through itself, like that. And then you put that over your spool. So, oh, what, not so what's gonna? <laughs> let me. Yep. So he's gonna. See how it's wrapped on the spool like that? And then you're gonna go back to where your bottom was, wherever your bottom was. So that's all he can run right there is, is just whatever that amount is. So he's gonna run, 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 and then it's gonna set on him. Okay. And they, if it's over eight pounds, it'll break that. Okay. And then you gotta go to your whole spool. Right. But if he's under eight pounds, yeah. that sets the hook for him. And you don't have to pull back as right. much and you keep your hands yeah. warm. Yeah, and right there. And he, yeah, he'll be right there. Yeah, he'll fight that rubber band for hours. <laughs> yep. It gives him that give. Right? So I think 
Simple as that. That's Where how I do it. I, I set right mine there, up right. like that so they can't run. There you go. Yep. One, one hand above, one below. Gotcha. Nice jack trap. You guys got some awesome traps out here. I got yeah. a few. A few <laughs> good little ones. pinkers out over there. We're late. How long has oh, that been ready? Jeez. Hey. Hey. How's the fishing? <laughs> they what? just lost a decent one. Did they? Yeah, it was hung up though. It hung bottom. Oh, geez. Yeah. It was a good one. Uh, did you set any traps? No, no, we were just talking. Oh, talking. Yeah. I don't know. It's windy and chill. It's yeah, really windy. Yeah. Just... We were talking about going back out, but it's I pretty. Commit, man. It's pretty ragged out there. It's pretty nice in here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in here, it's not bad at all. This is almost bedtime. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna sleep like a log tonight, man. Yeah. Early to bed, early to rise. Fish, hey. like, fish like hell and make up lies. You make. Oh, I'm starving. And I get cold. And to be honest with you, I've had two Gatorades, a bunch of water, and a protein shake today. Yeah, so I haven't even much. starving. No. <laughs> I, I gotta have another water. I had one. Take all you want. There's another case in your bunker in there far enough to... Donnie it. Chop Suey. I am starving. I put a little... It's got a little bit... You tell me where, how much you want, John. Another one. It's got a little bit of a kick, but that, not much. Now yeah. get me started. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Thank you. Geez, I'm not used to service right? like this. Mm. Have a little All right, guys, we're going to settle in, eat some dinner. Um, <laughs> probably not going to make it out with the boys again. It's pretty windy out there, and I got a feeling once we fill that belly and cozy up next to that wood stove, it oh, might man. be good night, Irene. It's a long yeah. day for us. Yeah. We'll, really we'll, after bed. dinner, we're going to talk a little bit about the history, and I'm going to look through that history book tonight, too. So it'll be cool to go over that. But awesome, There's awesome. A lot day. of history here. Oh. The, the big barn is gone. That used to be. Yep. Jesus. Yep. This is a nice picture of it. Fell in. Oh, yeah, that book. You mm. love that book. Ah. You walk right down memory lane, that well, book. Well, <laughs> Al and I, I don't know what decade it was in, but we went down river to get mm. firewood. You know, we camped out at Ragmuff. Yep. And uh, so we're wow. going along. Mm. Uh, Al said, pull in here, we got some dead wood. So we went in, and believe it or not, we were scratching around, and we found a pair of cogged boots Yep. that must have been hanging on a tree limb. Where somebody died. Somebody died. Yeah, that's what they did. Yep. But well, that's going to do it tonight, fellas. That was a great evening. John is ready for bed. We yeah. We filled him right up with that good grub. I'm... I'm two bowls in, so I'm oh. well past bedtime, and Donnie's out yellowing the bank, and he's pretty well tired, too, so travel days take a lot out of you. It feels like I've been on a travel day for about a month, so I'm pretty smoke tired, and hopefully I'm snoring before John is. <laughs> Thanks for tuning Good in. Luck. Yeah, check it. Check us tomorrow. We're going to be fishing somewhere on Chizuncook or nearby, either a salmon day, a white perch day, or a cusk day. But it'll be something fun. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you then.